gonna be looking at all these trees today and uh, you got a bunch and it's exciting and Aki when you walk in here and now you're looking at this black gold jackfruit and J31 jackfruit. We're gonna have a nice tour here today. How many trees would you say you have total on your About property? About 500. He's planting seven feet apart. He can get 600 trees in an acre and he gets less fruit but more fruit per acre. Pickering is one of my favorites. I have ST Maui on the back. And this is a, a mango that I named after my mother. It's called Zita Lee. These, these are all late berries. So I have uh, orange essence, peach cobbler. These are all Venuses on this side. Sacy Love, I got these from Tropical Acres. I planted 20 of orange sherbet. I got star apples here. These are PPK. I got 15 of those. I ascribe to the concept of geographic de de designation. This is Harvest Harmonics, and the process is, all, is called Kimanasi. And they say that those frequencies stimulate the plant to pull more nutrients out of the ground. East Indian is one of Jamaica's favorite, but I can't grow it. This is a uh, white sapote Campbell. White oh yes, sapote. Campbell white sapote. Yeah, Look I at saw that. it from your, your video. If you feel the back of the leaves and it's rough, then it's a Chine hybrider. Oh, how's the persimmon do up here? Oh, excellent. This part is for sale. And 17 acres. This is the pond. This is the house pad here. And if you go online, you'll see it. Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees and I am at this amazing place in Vero Beach, Florida which is a little bit north of me and they have hundreds of mango trees here and a bunch of other fruit trees and we're going to take a tour today with Derek, the owner and we're going to learn about all the trees he's growing and just uh, see all his projects here and it's going to be a great time. This is a wonderful property and if any of you have a dream to own a place like this. A good part of the property with hundreds of fruit trees is for sale. And I'll have that information in the video as well. This was a pleasure to come on up here and uh, a dream of mine one day to have something like this. It's absolutely amazing. And check it out, here it goes. All right, everybody, here we are with Derek and this is CB Farms out of Vero Beach, Florida. And we're gonna be talking to him today. He has a huge property with a bunch of different fruit trees, not only mangoes, but you have a ton of mangoes also. And so Derek, how long have uh, the trees been in the ground here? Um, the initial planting was about seven years ago. We started with mango trees and avocado trees along this driveway. Uh, it was an empty lot, 17 acres, and it had just this driveway. It's a, this is an axis, it's called a, like a uh, flag property. The access road is two acres and then there's three five acre plots at the back. So it looks like a flag. And so we planted the driveway first and we established a drip tubing with the one inch poly pipes all the way down. But we made a mistake because the poly pipe doesn't carry water for more than 600 feet. And so it was very difficult to get drip down this end from way up there. It was an artesian well, so we didn't have a pump at the time. Subsequently, we established electricity from the, we went underground and went down to the farm. We'll show you where the panel is. So when you first moved here, was it your goal to plant trees or is that something that happened later on? Oh, definitely. We, uh, wherever we lived, we always planted trees. I moved to Florida in 2000, first lived in River, Riverland Village and it was about a one, a half acre property. We had 68 fruit trees by the time I was done. And that's not counting the papaya trees. We, got, we had like 18 mango trees and tons, longan, lychee, everything you could think of, persimmons. Uh, anyway, uh, we left there. I took some of the trees with me actually because I'd started already practicing to graft. And so I took two of the trees I'll show you in the back. I still have them with me because we moved them to another house and I dug them up and brought them with me. This is our Aki tree uh, that was planted early. So that one's about seven years old. So you must uh, trim it because that's kind of short. We took the top tree. out, yeah. Okay. And same thing, we, we have uh, star fruit in the corner. How often do you cut the Aki tree there? That's the only time we cut it. I'm going to have to cut it again. In fact, maybe a drastic cut because 
I can't get to the fruits. And yeah. the squirrels get them before me. Wow, so you got ackee and star fruit right here in the front. Right, and this is black gold uh, jackfruit. Black gold jackfruit. I had to take the top off because I didn't understand. I, I, I subscribed to a channel called Meadowcroft. It's an Australian couple. Yes. And they show you how you do the same pruning that you do with uh, mangoes. You want to get the vase shape. Take out the middle, uh, choose the scaffolding limbs, the structure of the tree. So I had no structure. They were just bearing, and you can see where it had fruit last time. We had three fruit right here on this stem right here. And so I took the top out, and now I'm going to have to try to recover a shape. Maybe if I take some of these limbs off and try to get, try to get the bar shape back. But, um, I have so this is a black gold jackfruit. Yeah, and this is J31, which fruited quite a bit, but they tend to fruit close to the ground and, it, and the animals are getting them. I'm trying to do air layering okay. uh, of the jackfruit. I watch those. Uh, so how are the animals out here? Do they bother a lot of animals? Lot of well, it, the pr problem is we have squirrels, we have ra raccoons, and we have possums. They have predatory animals like uh, the bobcat and some coyotes but not that many more anymore and we have dogs in the back oh, we have goats and cows in the back as well what's this here this is long gun plum we have about 50 long gun plums there's another one right and there's another a long gun plum or a long gun long gun it's called okay. a plum. chinese plum it's like a cousin to the Got lychee it. right so there's and they all along and then of course the avocados that's the closest avocado. We have three varieties. One's called bacon, which is like a hasp, but it's small, small like a hasp, but very flavorful. And then we have Monroe, which is cold tolerant. I try to get cold tolerant varieties because we do get a frost sometimes in the 20s. So, um, and so I got a little greedy because in retrospect, if we had put the one row of mangoes here, we would have been comfortable. Because <laughs> now, with a row of avocados on one side and a row of mangoes, on, we have to navigate between them with the golf cart. Sure. So, this so, is... So, what's the other avocado, the third one that you have? Oh, it's Lula. Lula. Right. Okay. And I have an interesting story, too. One of the um, Monroe's died, and the rootstock came up, and I let it go, and it produced a wonderful avocado. I'm trying to reproduce it. I'll show you my experiment as we go forward. These, this is one of my favorites, Pickering. Pickering? Yeah, when I'm, I have almost every zill variety. I probably don't have honey, uh, raw honey. Wasn't really impressed. Oh, and I don't have um, the uh, a Super Alfonso. Never tasted it, but I have Alfonso and I have to top work all of them because see, you will see I've, I cut them down. This was an Alfonso. And I top worked it with triple sec. This is almost okay. all triple sec. See, this is my bud union right here. Uh, yeah, Super Alfonso is one of the best. That's it's what amazing. I figured. You say you have one growing. So. so I know you did different. How many trees would you say you have total on your About property? About 500. Over 500 trees. And how many acres do you have total? 22 acres. 22. And I know you planted these in sections uh, as you went along. So this first section that you planted here, I knew you knew about planting trees, but the, ch the choices of the avocados and the seasons and the distance, did you know about all that or did you just learn as you go? I just learned as I, as I went because what happened is I couldn't get any plants at one time. I didn't even know about Zill. I went to Pine Island and all they had to offer me was 30 Kesars and they were in seven gallon pots, but they would give us um, a deal on if you buy a certain amount. It was thirty dollars a plant for a seven-gallon pot at the time. That was like seven or eight years ago, and so uh, I got them and I put them in first. But we put them twenty feet apart. Then I read the same guys at Pine Island told me that they couldn't give me any more mango plants because there was a guy in Dominican Republic that was buying everything they had. They had to deliver 3,000 plants to him, so they had no more plants to sell. And I said, well, what's he doing? They said, he's planting seven feet apart. He can get 600 trees in an acre, and he gets less fruit, but more fruit per acre. And that's what the commercial guy. So I started doing 15 and 12. Some of these were actually seven feet apart, but I ended up taking out ones in between. See, these two 
are not even 10 feet apart. So these two are not even 10 feet apart. How yeah. old are these trees? These are about six years old. And how often do you trim them? Um, every season now. I've been trying to take the middles out. Um, there's a lady that co-authored a book with uh, Richard Campbell. Her name is um, Nelvis Ledesma yes. from Fairchild. And she suggested that same thing. You choose your scaffolding limbs. And if every year you take off all of one limb, so a quarter, if you have four limbs, uh, a quarter of the tree will go the first year. Then you'll replenish the entire canopy every four years. The trunk will get larger, but the tree will never get very tall. And so that's what I'm trying to do, but with 500 plants, I'm losing track. <laughs> yeah, so now there's one knot in the middle there, so did you take I, something I took out? it out, yeah, I took it out, um, only because I'm in the process of, see, this is even, I'm making budwood, but I can't keep up with myself, because these are actually ready to be harvested, and we could do um, some grafting. See, pickering's one of my favorites, so I like to use it um, because it's so productive here. See, this is taken out the middle to create that vase shape and also trimming some of the lower limbs. So, do you have help here or do you do this all by yourself? Uh, Lamar, my partner, is the only help. We used to get some help before COVID, but after COVID, nobody wants to work. So tell me again, why did you take a tree out from here? Oh, I took it out to put it on the other side because this part is for sale and 17 acres and a lot of people who looked at the property are not interested in the mango trees so i have five pickerings i said oh let me take two and put over there all right so let's let's uh talk about this so you have two different lots one lot is how many acres five acres with a house and the other lot is 17 acres with uh, the rest of the farm in the back we'll take a look at in a minute and the 17 acres is for sale right 17 acres we put it on the market a month ago Okay. We had a couple of people looking. One gentleman has landscape companies. He wants a place to park his vehicles. And it would be an investment for him as well. But he came, but he's concerned about having to care for the trees. Uh, he did, but I'm, as, you know, we're not really selling the trees, but it would be nice to get someone who cares about trees. Is My, there a link uh, that we can put below the video, a real estate link to the yeah, property? Yeah, we'll take a picture of the... Uh, in fact, if we walk out there now, we could just put it on your camera. It's okay. uh, the sign, the for sale sign. So the 17 acres is with no house, correct? It, no, but it's got a house pad, which we'll take a look at as well. And it also has a three quarter acre pond, which is fully stocked. I put in the entire food chain. We started with uh, crayfish, um, um, bro they call them mullets. Um, Mollies, the ones that feed the mosquito fish. We have mollies, and then we put in bream and um, one other feed, and then the Florida, Florida largemouth. Okay, bass. anybody that's interested, uh, check that out. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, this is the pond. This is the house pad here. And if you go online, you'll see it. These are some of the trees in the back. We'll take a look. Wow. I have a shade house. With All right, the there's the name and number, okay. And that's my neighbor. Okay. Uh, the house pad's right next to the pond. And okay. the pond is fed with an artesian well. It has a fountain, you'll see the fountain in the back. Now, we're in Vero Beach, Florida, right? Yes, this is so, the bottom end of the county. What zone are you in? Because recently they changed the zones. So right, we were 10A because we do get, we're considered central Florida. In fact, the county line is right here in this swale and Fort Pierce is next door. And so we're the last uh, horizontal, east so or west. So you're 10A? 10A, yeah. Okay, so you don't have problems with frost on the mango trees? Not really, I'll show you some examples. Um, east Indian is one of Jamaican's favorite, but I can't grow it. I had five trees, but the very bark just burns off. You, know? it just, you, know, you just see the bark fall off after the first freeze. It doesn't tolerate 40 degrees. And sometimes one year we got three waves of 25 degrees. Now, even though it was just two nights each, each time, it does put a number on the plants. This was originally our entrance, but then when we got on that side, we opened up another entrance on that okay. side. Well, let's all right, so we're gonna be looking at all these trees today and uh, 
we got a bunch and it's exciting and aki when you walk in here and now you're looking at this black gold jackfruit and j31 jackfruit we're gonna have a nice tour here today and he sells his fruit via the mail that's what he does because it's kind of far to get on out here so he sells it in the mail all righty yeah i see alex is one of your favorite people me too because he's taught me a lot whenever i want to find out about a particular plant so let's look so the trees here you said you did avocados on this side yeah and this is a this is a bacon avocado and you did mangoes on this side right now how far apart is it this way see this way was 15 feet and that's a mistake okay. because these trees should have been just in the middle and forget about the berm that's a, a star fruit right there trying to survive so you said if you had to do it again you would have did what now i would have put the mangoes here just one single row of mangoes because now they're actually getting into the they're getting into the um, driveway okay um, with, let's see. so you wouldn't have done avocado probably put them somewhere else because okay. we do have the space lots of space these are all long and plums oh, long so you got plums, long ends here long okay. and long and all the way down okay and initially we started with muscadines because we came from south carolina and i was growing them in my house in my yard in south carolina but we had a one acre property in orangeburg but we got 270 plants planting 20 feet apart with 400 um four foot post six foot post and we had drip tubing six thousand feet of drip tubing to water them but they just never did well and the screws get in before we do why do you think they didn't do well here i'm not sure um there it's just i think they need the change of weather uh, the cold snap that they get some some fruits set their blossoms during the winter when they get enough cold and I think muscadines might be like, there's a guy in Fort Pierce that grows them for wine, but we just, we, we got some, but the squirrels got most. We didn't get enough. And so I have all those post piled up. Okay. These are PPK. I got 15 of those. That's uh, the lemon meringue, lemon right? Lemon meringue, yes. But again, and, and how old again were these trees? These are about seven years, six to seven years. Six so to seven years, and that's like less than 10 feet, right? Right, and I took the middles out. Too. And then these, I decided we had 15 of them, so I was going to make it into something else. So these are four of them that I sacrificed and just waiting for it to regrow, and then I'll do uh, budding okay so those are more, yeah. <clears throat> and so ppk comes all the way up here to join with kesar and the kesar start here and they initially were 20 feet apart and the avocados are on the other side see that's the bacon i see so you got the mangoes 20 feet apart and in between on the other side 15 feet away you have the bacon there's a jackfruit that's a jackfruit that one is um orange crush okay and then this one's and this, this is monroe avocado monroe okay and quesars uh, we have a lot of lemongrass on the back just uh, that's a persimmon oh how's the persimmon do up here oh excellent we have the, a couple uh, we have the tropical one which is like the triumph i think because uh zil calls it triumph i mean tropical but, yes <clears throat> and then i have china jackfruit where's your china jackfruit it's small it's yeah, this one right here. that's my favorite one yes i remember and it's a soft jackfruit but an excellent flavor oh it's excellent that's china that's uh, china okay oh no it may be this one sorry that's china, that's china. okay and then there's more bacon and so these are our kissars then i planted pickering did so well up there that I did 20 pickerings at 20 feet apart on this side. Because now, what made you go from 10 feet apart there to 20 feet here? Only because I thought if they were in fact dwarf, I was going to drop another mango tree in between. Got it, got it, <laughs> so okay. But it, it's fine the way they are. Because what happened, we had a bad a hurricane, and all, most of these KSRs that have triple trunks is because they broke off in the hurricane and respiked. 
Okay. They grew back. See, most all of these grew back from the hurricane. I think it might have been Irma or Wilma, one of those. Irma, maybe. And then, that's another bacon. And this is my experiment here, I was telling you about. This um, avocado grew up from the rootstock, and it is excellent. So I'm doing um, kind of like a side graft. What'd well, you name it? I haven't named it yet. Okay. Yeah, I have pictures on my phone. It is excellent. It's big, and it's long, and very flavor, like buttery flavor. When um, is it fruit? Early uh, or mid-season? It's mid-season. Okay. And in so. fact, um, it didn't do well this year, but I think it's because of the weather. When the mangoes did well, they didn't do well. So I have this little experiment where I put the rootstock and then just do a side graft with the graft already uh, still attached to the main tree. And I'm hoping I can get them to establish. And then if it does, then you just cut off the graft branch and take the plant from there. All right, so we're now at the top end of the, of the flagpole, which is 1,300 feet. It's almost a quarter mile for the driveway to come in. And these are more pickerings up here. And then these are persimmons over here. All okay, right, let's slow down and look at the persimmons. It, they're actually called Ormond's persimmons. They do require a little bit of... Um, chill hours? Yes, 200 chill hours. So they tend to need a, a 10, zone 10. They're like pepper lights, like Christmas lights. In fact, this is a small bearing because last year where the tree would like over 100 fruit or more. And then I have some others. The, these are the crunchy variety, which, which um, they're not, these are astringent. You have to let them ripen completely okay. because uh, Fuyu is the, is the crunchy one. Sure. And, and they, I see they, some coconut here. Yes, I have coconut. I planted these uh, from tiny plants. And, so, and there's some long gone back there. That's my uh, jackfruit, which is uh, uh, the golden nugget jackfruit. And this is my well. I have an interesting um, concept. I don't know how many people know about it, but it's called Harvest Harmonics. I'm going to show you what the device is and see if I can tell people what it is and how it works. And they can go research it. This is Harvest Harmonics, and the process is called, it's called Kimanasi. K These guys... At first, it almost appears like it's snake oil because what this device is, is just a metal cabinet with um, some chips, silicone chips, which are loaded with frequencies that are triggered by the flow of water. And they tag these frequencies onto the water molecule because they're, they're, they're charged molecules. And they say that those frequencies stimulate the plant to pull more nutrients out of the ground. So it makes a nice fruit, a, a nicer fruit, healthier plants, sweeter fruit. But the device, the silicone chips, last for a couple of years. So the well water comes up, goes through here, and then it gets... But when the chips don't last, do you need to replace that? Yes, you have to take this whole device out. And it's... So it'll give us a couple of years, no fertilizer needed. Um, they say if the plant is healthier, then you don't need to spray. This is sweet tart. And this is a, a mango that I named after my mother. It's called Zeta Lee. I, um, the original tree actually was 100 feet tall in Miami Gardens. And Wilma blew it down. I know it's a seedling because it, nobody has had it and it was that big a tree. And I just happened to air layered it because I wasn't even good at budding at the time. I just air layered it and I got two plants and one died and one survived. And so I have maybe about 25 plants of it now, but it's a wonderful mango. And I, I, well, I'm the only one who has it, but uh, you know, as with mangoes, it's good to share. But everybody's coming up with mangoes now. Even uh, Chris, a truly tropical, yes. she has lemon Yes. You know, there's a lot. And, and Zill has stimulated everybody to be willing to wait, you know, just to so see. What do you call what? this one? Zeta Lee. It's my, Zeta name, Lee. Uh, my mom's half Chinese, so she's eaten. What does it taste like? Oh, it's delicious. I can't tell you. And it's beautiful. It gets, it's, when the sun hits it, in fact, that's one tree of it right there. I wish I had taken a picture of it because 
when the sun hits it and this entire side was just like jewels hanging wow. but anyway yeah it'll become known i mean <laughs> in fact i have budwood that i'm taking from there now to do some work most of these are uh, from my second planting and i top worked most of them except for mahachanuk um, i top worked all the uh, Valencia pride because it's a big tree and it gives you one or two fruit and so I put everything from Zill on it including Zeta Lee but I have fruit punch and I have sweet tart and I have um, the all the others uh, cotton candy and pina colada so this part is where the entry and this is where the electricity is and it comes down in the ground and comes up to this panel and it feeds the shed. We have a refrigerator and we have supplies. That's the shade house. We have, uh, that banana is a dwarf. I got this sucker from Georgia of all places. Uh, it was just an ornamental banana. The lady said, yeah, but it bears fruit, but they burn off with the winter. And I said, I'll, I, I'll take a sucker, but it's delicious. He said, you can walk over here, I'll show you what it, it looks like it may be it may even be namwa because is is namwa your favorite not my favorite but i like the size of it so it's yeah, really see? good though yeah it's got tons of tons of fruiting oh yeah yeah and each one i mean it is this there's more on this side they all have fruit there's more over here wow it's a short, fat banana, but very flavorful. Um, yeah, this is some of the Valencia Pride. I have ST Maui on the back. And over here are, are the common, um, the Florida variety. But I did everything on this. I was going crazy just doing... Um, I have pineapple pleasure on that side. So there's a lot that's happening. We can ride down here and I'll show you the mango trees in the back. And all these mangoes, your main goal is to have them for sale? Yeah, for fruits. And then I'll show you what we transition into because the, we all, it's okay to have a nice mango variety, but if it's not producing enough fruit, then it doesn't make sense. So I've been reading uh, and I ascribe to the concept of geographic de de designation. Every climate has a particular, this is Zeta Lee again. I'm doing the sorrel, which is Jamaican. In fact, I'll show you this one. I don't think it's very common. It's called Manchester Black. I got it from Jamaica and the pods are like almost like a monster the way it looks I'll show you oops what it looks like just because wow this is what people eat but I, but it's so huge wow that, you know and the flavor is delicious you know it's like it's really good and it's supposed to be very um nutritious anthocyanins because of the strong color pigment but they drink it as a seasonal beverage and you just eat that raw you can and in fact they make a tea and you can make a cake you can make a preserve yeah uh, sorrow it's tangy yeah. And the uh, size of sorrow you're growing other vegetables here or is it all oh yeah vegetables? i have lots of raised beds i'll show you them okay. in the front this is Gary already trying to flower. I have Gary. This is Sweet Tart again. And this is um, the pineapple. It's named after a pineapple. Sugar loaf. Sugar loaf. Yeah. And then I have um, um, Sun Pari in the back and some Indian varieties. It's delicious. Sun oh, yes. Wonderful mango. It's called, I think the interpretation is Golden Angel or something. This is buttercream. And then I have some seedlings here. And I have like six different types of bananas. There's Goldfinger. And this is Puerto Rican burro plantain. That one is Mansat. is apple banana. Excellent. These two are lemon zest. 
But this one's full of flowers and this one's not none and they're right beside each other. So I'm not sure yeah. what the difference is. But, and then I have co uh, coconut cream and Angie. That's the house pad over there, along with the pond and the cows. And of course the goats in the background. But I planted all along here, very similar. This is fruit punch and then I have phoenix. These are two phoenix in blossom. And then we have Harvest Moon, which is another big mango, but again, they flower two or three times a year, but I haven't, in the ten, seven, eight years, I haven't got a fruit. So I started top working them as well, like, uh, these are coconut cream again, and some, this is candy, uh, cotton candy. So many trees. Wow, it's oh, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, exactly. And, and down there is my favorite, or one, another favorite, orange sherbet. Now, what's happening in here? That property belongs to, this is 27 acres I told you the guy bought, the gentleman bought. Uh, it's an L-shaped property that goes that way. Got he, you. At first, he said he was interested in selling me five acres so I could have an access entry to the back here and I could split it. But it turns out that he's said he's going to hold on to it because of his his kids and grandkids. Okay. But see, everybody's trying to blossom, and it's just November. See, yeah, it's you know, over there interesting triple, year. You know, we have a lot. There's Juliet, White Peary, Triple Sec, Great Karen selection. Michelle. Wow. Yeah, I, I planted 20 of orange sherbet. I was so enamored with the mango. You like that one, huh? Oh, it's a wonderful mango. In fact, uh, Richard Campbell said when he tasted it, he just knocked his socks off. I mean, this is Ugly Betty. I have about six Ugly Bettys in the middle. I even have Beverly, which is an old mango from the Zill family. There's a story that they used to take it with them on vacations because it was a, a late mango. So I had, most of this was planted up. My neighbor, he's Jamaican, he's an architect, Mr. Lou. And he has cows over here, so this guy gets the um, agricultural credit. And back here with Pina Colada and Neelam. And we have a, another one called the Rainbow Mango. I think it's called Raposa. It's from, maybe from yes. Hawaii. Yeah. Beautiful looking mango. Just can't get enough of it though, you know. And, and these are Banganapali and Alampur Banashan. Um, so just, uh, I, as I told you, I got almost everything that Zill had to offer. And I usually buy either five or ten plants. So that's how come. Well, how small were these when you planted them? What you plant uh, them? Well, I try to put the rows 15 feet apart at least. No, I mean what size? One gallon? Oh, one, three yeah, gallon. three gallons. Okay. Yeah, they only sell three gallons. Well, they, they sell higher, but they don't sell one gallon. So these, oh, these two are, are lemon zest again. And then in this little group is the Indian mangoes and the Raposa. Yeah, Repo this is an Indian mango with straw red leaves. And basically, that's it. I have a, I have to take that one up because it's a Maycock is the name of that sapodilla. And these are pineapple pleasure. So you have some pineapple pleasure, you have some Maycock sapodilla. Yeah. I have a lot of, I have 10 pineapple pleasure over by the house, but they too never really this is Maycock. And it bears a small sapodilla, but it's a lot, hundreds, you know, it's, it's overwhelming to the tree actually. Um, so I'm going to move it up. That's the artesian well that feeds the pond. Uh, and the house pad is behind that uh, tree. Now when you say artesian well, is that like a hot, uh, like a cold spring? It's cold spring, yeah. It comes up on its own pressure because the well is so deep. It's got the pressure from underground and it's not flowing with a pump. It's coming up on its own. Wow. Always? Always, non-stop. In fact, that's what I used to irrigate the mango trees before we got electricity. And we have it here too. So, so that water's clean enough to drink. Yes, but it does have a little high sulfur content. So it may have a little smell, but there's no germs in it. Uh, it's just dissolved chemicals. So it will have a little smell. But, uh, but it's good for the plant, but you have to aerate it before it hits the pond because it can hurt the fish, I say. So I just bring it up from that fountain and aerate. 
That's my. And how long have you had this property? There's another. Is that an Aki? Yeah, another Aki. Okay. Yeah, it's a Jamaican state. So you got Aki, jackfruit, mango, longan, and sapodilla. Yeah, and these are oranges. I planted an orange field. I used the temple orange because it was an, another Jamaican orange. It was discovered in Jamaica, and I bought it from Harris Nursery in Tampa. But I don't want to poison the trees, and it's the only way to grow citrus is to poison the trees. You know, you have to use a systemic insecticide, and it comes out in the blossoms and hurt the bees, and I'm sure it's in the fruits. So I don't drink orange juice much anymore because then the bottom ones are, are the, those are the probably the only ones. I put it up on a mound, which is the standard principle they use for orange groves here in Florida. I have some purple kale right there, Russian kale, there's some ginger, eggplant, sweet potatoes, okra. I have a drip system there, which is fed from the same well, and these are okras as well. Let's take a look. Yeah, so after the mangoes weren't that productive, because I was thinking, okay, 500 trees, even 10 mangoes per tree, you know, it's thousands of mangoes. But it's not that way. It, there's sometimes a tree won't give you mangoes for two or three years, you know, especially if it's a seasonal variety. And especially if it's not adapted to where you are. See, that's what I mean. So my process now is to find out which ones are actually... Um, this is a, a, P, a B, P called... Pudi, P-U-D-H-I, a Pakistani guy gave it to me. I said it's delicious, but I haven't tasted it yet. But and then we have gandulas. The Spanish call it gandulas. I buy this from Atlas Pete and Mulch. It's the same blend that Al's fruit tree uses. You gotta watch out for these mosquitoes. Yeah, so this is my next project. I'll just walk you through here quickly. After the fruits weren't that productive, we decided let's do plants because when COVID hit, we couldn't get any plants anywhere. And so uh, we started this project, which we were going to, this is hugel culture, you know, raised beds where you put garbage in the bottom, not garbage, but anything uh, compostable. And so we decided, all right, we'll plant all the seeds we can find and then we'll bud onto them. And they don't have to be pressured by having to be marketed right away. This is dwarf moringa. And I have some, some fig. This is a fig, uh, LSU purple fig. I have quite a few other figs as well. And then, so we planted all the avocado seeds we we found. All the mango seeds that were on, on the ground, most of these are from all those quesars. Cause we started picking mangoes every other day. Then we started picking every day. Then we started to have to pick up mangoes three times a day. There was just, just so many, some more purple kale. And I, I bought um, the Atamoya from California. This one's called Bumpy. And I have never heard of it, so I'm just growing the seeds. Maybe as rootstock. But then I did Gennep. I bought the Gennep from Lara, uh, Lara Farms. He has a variety, but I plant the seeds. And then, so the mangoes, they come up to this stage, and we have to, we got so overwhelmed with the number of seeds that we're planting three in a pot. So then we're going to have to either bud in here or take them out individually, and then bud onto them. I tried a dragon fruit as well. And we did all kinds of other, this is Aki, and then mangoes, avocados, papayas, moringa, all of them. And this is, I think, the system that they use at Zill. It's just one drip per, you know, per, and this is the same. Uh, again, the sorrel that they uh, eat, they, they make a drink. So the idea is to get lines of mangoes that can stay in the sun. And we're going to do budding, a project with the buddy. Wow, you have the land here for that. Are those your animals? Yeah, we do goats, and the dogs help us keep the predators away. We have, we have a dog called Karakachan. So the property goes back there and goes all the way back. Look wow, so again, you have 17 acres, you said? This side, yeah. 
and we just divided up. We were going to do pasture rotations, but it takes a little bit of science. We started we trying to grow sun hemp. This is Lamar. He's the one doing most Lamar. of the work. Yes. Yeah, he's my partner. He's from South Carolina originally, and we lived in Orangeburg. And then I was telling him we came home here and decided we had to get somewhere to plant because Citrus Springs were taught that we could grow. <laughs> yeah, we yes. have a lot. And so, yeah, so that's the transition now is just that, uh, I hate to say that age can be a compromise, you know, because I don't believe that you are really compromised, but just the mere uh, logistics of trying to find the time to manage the volume that you have. If you're young or if you had five kids to do all the chores, you know, delegate the duties. So that's why we decided to downsize a little and still enjoy some of what we have. And I'll show you some of that on the other side. Um, but this will all go with the, um, if the person is interested, if the land sells. If, it's funny, somebody, a young person, or maybe like somebody like Zane's world, you know, with, I like to see that bonding with the dad and the son and they have a thriving business with the enthusiasm. And so somebody, you know, in that, position who has the years ahead of them that can see the vision and take it to a fruition is the ideal person for something like this and the taxes are agriculture right yeah so we, the taxes discount. here is just four hundred dollars a year wow for 17 acres wow yeah that's uh, it's it's like a no-brainer <laughs> wow you can sit on it and do nothing you know i'm sure in fact we had one lady come to buy a trees she's trying to get agriculture uh designation up by where she is and she has 10 acres and she keeps asking me how much plants do i need i mean she buys 10 plants <laughs> i'm going that's not enough yeah but i'm going to plant them 30 feet apart so they look like a big orchard <laughs> Wow. But yeah, they need a little bit more than that. So that's this side you showed us. Then you're yeah. going to show us your personal plant. Yeah, that's, side. we can write onto that now. Okay. I'm sorry. I see. <laughs> that's so <clears throat> wonderful here. And this is your neighbor's property over here? Right. That guy has about 120 acres. And he's an older guy who, um, who has sons or. or who don't want to sell so they lease it to another gentleman and he has cows over there okay so they get the agricultural credit as well um i have a little surprise to show you i planted red custard apple seeds red I, custard apple well i had i had the tree actually but we dug it up and brought it here san and pablo well, it wasn't a San Pablo either. I got it from a nursery in, on Griffin Road. And it was just a tree. It was about 10 feet tall, but it was a single straight, a straight up. And so I put it in the ground at the house we had in Citrus Springs. And a couple of years later, it fruited. And then when we moved from Citrus Springs to come here, I moved the tree. We moved all the trees we could. And uh, it didn't survive, but I had actually set some seeds lots of seeds i had set a lot of seeds and um i just planted them everywhere we have like 30 plants of it you know and so i was thinking when is it going to be a fruit and so you have to trim it in order for it to flower you know because it flowers on the new new leaves right when it's when it uh, puts out a new shoot then the blossoms come and that's when you get the fruit. So with this five acres here, with the barn, I have bees in that wall as a matter of fact. So this is the other side of the property. Where right. you, so your property is probably like an L, right? Yes. So all okay. of this is on this side with the house. Okay. The, so this is five acres. This right. Time. Okay. And these are Laura's um, purple. Uh, well, Hippolito is the oh, green. Oh, Hippolito, yes. That's and, and, and this one is the... Laura, Laura purple. In fact, it's got fruits on it too, but they start off green and, and then it's they, not too cold up here for the star apples. They do the bigger ones, don't suffer much. But see, I got star apples here, They're and big. it's not too and they'll grow. You've had fruit yeah. on them, yeah. There's fruit on here, 
Have you eaten fruit from this tree yet? Yes, uh -huh. and it, wow. uh, it fruits a lot. Yeah, there's another green one. It flowers a lot, yeah, and they look green initially, but they turn purple eventually. Wow. Yeah, see, so there's a couple right here. Yeah, now's the season. And there, and there, yeah. So how come you only have two star apple of all the trees? Well, I have, yeah, well, <laughs> it's funny because I have so many other things. I have six guavas and five uh, sapodillas, and these are more raised beds. And we do um, co um, collard greens, sweet potatoes. This is a Jamaican-type sweet potato. It's actually climbing up on top of the collard greens this way. They look so tall. Where'd you get your uh, beds from? Uh, this is Birdie's raised beds. Okay. And I just wait for them to go on sale and then get a bunch. The this sapodi is here. Yeah, this is Alana. And if I show you, I'm doing air layering too because it's easy to air layer. And, you know, a lot of people say you need a root, a, a root stock in order to get... Um, a good growth, but I, I don't really think that, yeah. In fact, from my experience, I look at some of the plants you get in the nursery and they're root bound. So you don't really get the tap root effect either, you know. So I just air layer and it never stops bearing. Alano is so, is wonderful. And what are all these trees here? All right, so these now are very similar. These are some of the ones we brought from the house, and I'll show you them. So these are all the mango trees? This is, this is, this is the second set that came here, because we didn't give up the house before we had to move them. So this is the red custard apple, and that's just from seedlings. Oh, wow. But um, I, I, I found one with a fruit on it. I'm going to take you there and show it to you now. Just, uh, and these are a number of different ones, but I, um, this is Zeta Lee that I've top worked because I bought 10 triple sec and I put them in two rows right here. And they had lots of fruit, you know, and they were big fruit. And we had a windstorm for two days and all of them blew off. Wow. And so I said, all right, I have 10. Let me put uh, some of that. So that's the original Zeta Lee tree. We split it in two and brought it here. And we cut it off at the top. This one we brought from Fort Lauderdale. And it, it's been moved twice, so you can see how the stump looks. But we cut this one here, and it respring, and we just made it have some limbs. So this is the original tissue, Zeta Lee. Uh, and so we have one row of triple sec. Then we have all, all summer and then 015, and then we have Romani, and then we have Pineapple Pleasure. They're all in rows. And you and Lamar take care of all of these trees? Yes. Wow. It's funny. I, 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 it's a, and how far apart are these trees on this side? Uh, well, in this side, we went 15 feet and, and 20 feet uh, in rows. So, so this is the ones you planted last? Basically, yeah. Well, actually, no. I'll show you the last ones. They're okay. still seedling looking, but they're on the other side. And then um, these went through. This is pineapple guava, but I can't get it to flower. People say you can even eat the flowers, yeah. the pineapple guava. And I have seedling jackfruits everywhere because the new trend is now to plant them from seed because they bear just as fast as when you bud them. I'll show you my experiment over here. This is J31. And these are some uh, seedlings that I have. According to Bobby, if you feel the back of the leaves and it's rough, then it's the Chine hybrid or some sort. So, uh, but I've been doing the same side veneer. This one, the wind blew this one off, so it just, it just broke off. So you put a side like veneer this. of this jackfruit on right. a seedling. So the seedling is in a pot. And then the branch belongs to yeah, the tree. Yeah, okay, explain this to me because I have a tree that I want to do this to. So right, just so you just take, you, you take off part of the bark on both sides and you just put them together. So you did but that this, to a seedling. Right, well the seedling is here, so you have to bring the but seedling. But normally if this was a grafted variety, let's say this was a black gold and you wanted to put it on this tree, this is the way you would do it? Basically, you just, yeah, you, you take the grafted variety it's still alive, it's still attached, and you approximate it to the tree you want to put it on. We're reversing it here. We're taking J31, 
and putting it onto a rootstock. But before we separate it from the main tree, we make sure it makes a union right here so that the rootstock can support this graft. So All right, let me show you my, uh, uh, the custard apple. And this is so we could move in any direction. They were alternating. Each row I alternated. So you have passages going diagonally and you have passages going straight through. So you can go up and down or across. And then top working these. Romani again, same thing. I loved Romani, but it won't hold any fruit. So now I'm airlane. These are inexpensive. I bought the red Atamoya. And the red atamoya. There's a, That's a Lisa, right? No, the Lisa isn't red, but the red atamoya is expensive. Um, Pine Island selling them for three hundred dollars a plant, and Miami Fruit has them for like one seventy-five. But I'm just uh, ear, uh, just ear layering them, and this is uh, my red uh, custard apple from seeds. Oh wow! Yeah, and it's got a fruit on it. Look at that. Yeah. That's exciting. I'd say, yeah, it was fun to see that. You know, How old I, is this tree? This is about four years old. What did the seedling of? San Pablo? No, I, no, that's the seedling I, told you I got from Griffin Road. Okay. So the thing is, I, I'm, I was trimming it yesterday. And I was getting ready to even stimulate it by trimming off the tops. You know, because you have to trim. In order to get it to fruit, you usually have to trim. But that one self-pollinated. Wow. So that's a good sign. So we'll see what it does. I have several. I have one over there. I have... One right there. Yeah, right, the one next to it. I just split off some off the side. Again, it got burnt in the winter, and then several shoots came up. What do you have? Oh, several shoots came up, got you. Right. All along here are seedling mangoes that I brought from. They were underneath the mango trees we had at the other house. And I just decided to invest in the time and have them and wait for them. And several have flowered, but nothing holding any fruit. The first year, they didn't hold any fruit. I mowed the dragon fruit from the back because I wasn't getting enough control over them. So I have that. And then we have figs. That's the Chicago heart. How do the figs do around here? Good, but you have to, they're completely opposite. They need alkaline, so you have to put uh, lime on it. You have to put heavy lime. It, it doesn't burn, it doesn't hurt them. You can't overdo it. I just moved this coconut from the back because I grew this from, seed, from well, from a fruit. And this is more ackee. <coughs> this one has got pods on it that are opening up. Yeah, now. wow. So they're ready. It's ackee. All right, so this section now was, again, zill. These are the tropical persimmons that they're coming up but And I put Julie here, but an interesting thing occurred. The two rootstocks grew up on these. And this one flowered last year, the rootstock. And I'm thinking, boy, that must be a dwarf or something for it to so See, it's almost making, the, I, I, I don't think Julie is actually a good choice for us here. Again, that's another geographical designation. In Jamaica, they get them by the dozens, by the hundreds. Yes. And they're delicious. Here, if you get a Julie, it's softer on the seed or not the right flavor. So I decided I'd let the rootstock grow and see what it became. But here, again, zill choices. These are all late bearers. So I have uh, orange essence, peach cobbler. These are all venuses on this side. What's the distance on these here? These are 15 feet and then 20 feet for the passage. So I, I closed them in and widened it out so you can at least pass. And then I have a Maha Chinook and some Nam Dak Mai number four. One of them is actually fully flush, flushed out. And, and, and as I said, that's a strange thing. And then this is Jahangir. Oh, that's a uh, wonderful tree. Yes, it's a dark, a green mango. Yes, light skin, Light colored green flesh. How far are you from the coast? Uh, about 10 miles uh, as the crow flies. Do you have any uh, problems with uh, flooding here? No. In fact, before we got here, the swale on that side will drain us nicely. And there's a swale right here that drains us nicely. 
I look at these. This is Geary, and these are M4. M4, but I did a work on the peach cobblers. I didn't get enough, uh, so I started top working them, and this is all top worked. I put down another variety that I discovered, we call it Vero Beach. It's actually a seedling from, it's a seedling. Oof. Oh, I got it. I won't take that. Yeah, it's a seedling from a toolful. I just happened to plant the seed and I was going to bud on it. And I was in the house in Vero Beach and I said, I'm just going to put it in the ground. Man, a delicious mango. It's got good texture. It will make an excellent mango, a fruit salad mango because it does, it's not smushy. So, I how could people buy, purchase your mangoes? Oh, yeah, they have to kind of get in touch with us. Um, I think. The best way, Lamar is the computer person, but the best way is to call uh, or go online. We're trying to establish our website uh, for CB Farms. Okay, well, I'll put the phone number or any other contact information below the video in the description. Right, that'll be good. That'll okay. Help. Yeah, and I mean, we have, these are all sugar loaf, but I took ten, five out of the 10 to top work. And I'd said, I, some of them I have a little success, but somehow it doesn't, it, it doesn't take well. Not like how these took off, you know. But I'll, I'll work on them again. See, I budded them, but uh, this one's still alive because it's got, it's got a leaf coming. So I know it's still alive, but I, do, I usually do one on each main branch so that I can sacrifice all the rest if it, if it takes. So I'm going to cut these off and let this one grow. Um, because sugar loaf is an excellent mango too, but I'm not getting enough for having 10 trees. I don't get enough fruit to justify it. So I did guava here. I did zeta lee here. I did lemon zest here. And these are all the namdap my number four. This is maha chinook. So this is all peach cobbler. And I just, I'm holding them for the germplasm, the rootstock, but in essence, if they're not bearing, they might get top worked as well. Cause they're pretty good size. These, these are two. These are two um, super Julie. Wow, they're, they're, that's wonderful. They bore fruit too. That's wonderful. Yeah. So let's go over the last side now quickly, because I don't want to keep your family waiting too long, because. And so this section, I had moved a lot of um, sweet tart from the back because I love sweet tart too, you know, it's such a wonderful mango. Um, and so these are very similar but a much wider space. I think it's 25 feet for these because we wanted to make sure a tractor could go through. And so I had to take down quite a few oak trees. Um, that's some more sapodillas. And that's more of the red sugar apple. I mean, item more, or custard apple. These I bought from, from um, their Sacy Love. I got these from Tropical Acres. Um, he, because Zill doesn't carry them, doesn't sell sure. Sacy Love. And so these are different ones. That's a picker. And these are how far apart? These are very close. Uh, there's like, 10 feet maybe, but I made this wider. And I tried to diversify over here because I started reading. These are Karen Michelle's. And I planted the seedlings and tried to bud on top. That was the principle for this section. So some of these are just seedlings from seed. All these five are just seedlings. This is a sour tamarind. Now what about the wires up there? Are those gonna become an issue at all? Um, yeah. the, well, the plants are not underneath them. I actually, on this side, I put in 20 grapefruit on this side, the one they call Ray Ruby. Yeah. So if I keep the trees short, I don't think they'll ever get to the size of that wire. Okay. But, and this property line stops here in line with that uh, white spigot. Okay. And, and in line with the, with, yeah, right down the pole, pole, you can see the... So the property for sales on this side, but all these mangoes are on that side. Right. Okay. So, <clears throat> but as I said, it depends on people's 
PP2 is a wonderful mango. When I first tasted it, I went about 15. Wow. <laughs> it's just, it's just like and, uh, delicious, just a tang. You know, I, think I prefer tangy mangoes. You know, a lot of people do, you know. <laughs> the, that's why sweet tart is so good. Where are you from originally? Jamaica. Jamaica. <laughs> yeah. These are coming back. I transplanted these. I only, this is a Jac Jakarta. It's a wonderful example of how habits can kill a mango because they don't produce it anymore. And it's a wonderful replacement for a Bombay. Bombay mango is a Jamaican favorite, but we can't grow. I have five Bombay back there. I haven't had a single fruit in five years. Yeah, what's that one? Jakarta. Jakarta. And, and, and Jakarta is delicious, and it does well, uh, you know, in the cooler climate. So, so I'm hoping that I can hold on to the germplasm, although you can hardly get it. So this is, I top work this to, um, this is pickery but it was a little bit high but i'm hoping it's uh, the trunk will straighten out that's my bud union right there and but it just happened that the other two i could wait and bud them but i just took them off <laughs> so wow it'll just get stabilized and i got persimmons and i've got oh this is to, um a tribute to you and <laughs> Julian Lara. This is uh, White Sapote Campbell. White oh yes, Sapote. Campbell White Sapote. Yeah, Look I at saw that. it from your, your video. Is that your only White Sapote? No, I have another one back there, but they don't do well here. I don't know why. It's just just uh, just that's struggling, wonderful. struggling. Campbell yeah. White Sapote. Yeah, and that's Campbell. You said it tastes great. It doesn't yeah. have a do you have my May? My May? No, it won't do so well up here because this, okay. this is the um, butterscotch butterscotch i got that from zane nobody has seemed to have had it but it's more available now because he said he had sequestered a couple of plants and then he just wonderful kept them that's yeah. great and that's fruit punch we have a couple of fruit there. this one is the um uh the chinese plum jujube uh, jujube right yeah uh, got that from al's fruit trees so basically uh, that's it i have some bees in the back all right derek thank you for having us coming out this has been a great time here and uh i love your passion for growing uh fruit trees anything else you want to share with everyone just thank you very much paul i've been following you on youtube for years i've learned a lot i've met a lot of people through you i've gotten most of my plants because of watching your YouTube channel. And so I have to thank you for taking the time to come up. And it's a pleasure to meet you uh, finally. And also wonderful, looking forward to further visits, maybe in the spring when everything is all fully blossomed or in the summer when the mangoes are all hanging down and beautiful. I'll introduce you to some of the varieties that are not known. Zeta Lee and Vero Beach, those are two to mention. People can watch out for those as they become more popular. All right, thanks again. Yes. Wonderful. I'll be back here during mango season, hopefully, and taste some of these mangoes. And uh, yes, it's been a great tri trip here, and I'm glad I came and checked it out. All so. right, everybody, that was Derek, and this is uh, Fruitful Trees, and this place is amazing. And again, the majority of it, 17 acres of this place is for sale. I'll put the information below the video here, how to contact uh, the person who's selling this place the real estate agent and i'm also going to put derek's contact information below if you want to buy mangoes or other fruit during fruit season you can give them a call or email or whatever information we have they don't have a website yet but they will have one soon they're working on it this is a paradise this is vero beach florida i'll put your comments and questions below if you're not already a member please uh or not already subscribed please subscribe to the channel and if you have a farm you'd like me to come on out and check out your trees and feed you on the channel my emails below as well i'd love to come out i just get so much of a joy doing this so thank you everybody for watching have a great day and keep growing